So I'd like to welcome everybody back to Alabama Care. We have the absolute pleasure of having Mrs. Amy Kirby, Special Needs Minister, and Mrs. Sharon Little, the Assistant Special Needs Minister at Shades Mountain Baptist Church here in Birmingham. And it's not exactly in, is it in Birmingham? Is that the city limits there? It is technically in Vestavia. In Vestavia. Um, and at this point, I'd like to hand it back over. And if you would introduce yourselves, Amy, we'll start with you. Um, I'm Amy, as you said, um, when you started off calling me Miss Kirby, I was like, no, that's way too formal for me. Um, I don't think anybody knows me as Miss Kirby. Um, I am the special needs minister at Shades Mountain. Like you said, if we say Birmingham, we in one of the suburb, suburbs of Birmingham, but we're a larger church. So we actually serve, you know, many, many neighborhoods and communities around us. Um, I've been a member here long before I became um, a staff member been a member at Shades for 35, 36 years now since college. Um, so this was my church long before I ever served in this capacity. Um, started the special needs ministry with Sharon and two other wonderful ladies that are a big part of our team, Pam and Debbie, 21 years ago. So we've been doing this a while, which um, is kind of crazy to think about that it's been that long. I'm married. I have a college age daughter who's a sophomore and I have a daughter who's a junior. And for us, this has always been a family ministry. Like I said, I've been doing it 21 years, starting off as a volunteer. So my oldest daughter wasn't even born. So for us, this is what we do. This is who we are as a family. Um, we're all in. So that's kind of who I am. That's an amazing story. And uh, I always like to ask, uh, who's your football team? Or is <laughs> Oh, no doubt, Alabama. Um, we, we have had that pleasure. My children don't know anything but a winning team, so it's going to be a problem one day when we're not. Um, yeah, my husband graduated from Alabama, so we're all in. Very good. And Sharon, if you would introduce yourself. Sure. Um, Sharon Little. Uh, I am married. I uh, met and married my husband at Chase Mountain Baptist. I've been a member about as long as Amy and or a little bit longer. And um, just like similar story to Amy's, you know, was a member and um, long before this ministry was ever begun. And um just through acquaintance with a family in our church, um, um, the ministry was born uh, and just started with one, one child. Um, uh, my husband and I have been, uh, you know, serving there uh, in different capacities through the years. Um, special needs ministry was never on my radar. Um, but um, the Lord has blessed us and grown us and um, um, personal. I'm the mother of two children also. Um, I have a daughter um, who lives um, locally and she's a school counselor and I have a son who lives in uh, DC and um, they grew up at Shades and, you know, love the Lord and so. That's it it sounds like Shades has been a, uh, a rock in both of your families uh, for a long yeah. time. Absolutely. And, yes, absolutely. And I, I think that speaks volumes um, of what a community like that can do for a family. Mm -hmm. um, and I'd like to jump into what exactly is special needs ministry? It's not something that you hear spoken about um, or even, you know, other churches may not have it. What exactly is special needs ministry? Um, I'll let Sharon tell the story in a minute because she just alluded to a little bit of the story, but special needs ministry, will, I mean, I'm, I'm pretty firm on this with the churches that we talk to, is meeting the need of at least one person, one family in your church um, for someone who has, you know, um, some type of disability. For us, when we originally started, we were open to anyone, any age, you know, we had no, no boundaries. Um, really it became about children and young adults for us pretty quickly because the way our church works, the senior adults in the church kind of took care of their own. And we had wonderful greeters and ushers who would meet people at the door with the wheelchair or, you know, those sort of things. Through the years we have provided 
um, adults who had a physical disability and couldn't drive with the ride to church. It is supporting those with some type of disability and their families um, in any way in the church. We feel very strongly that it's a family ministry because let's face it, um, you've got to get up and get your kid to school five days a week. And, you know, church is one more day to get up, get out the door, get everybody ready. It is not easy. And so it needs to be worthwhile um, for you and, um, and for your child and for your other children to come. So we support really for our ministry. It's any time the doors are open and any type of ministry, we try to support either through having a program that, that runs side by side with other programs, or we do a lot of special things for our parents. We do a lot of special things for our kids. Um, and there are, we are fortunate that we have several other churches in the Birmingham area that do special needs ministry. So it is nice to have a little bit of um, camaraderie and, and I guess, um, I don't know what the right word is, but it's nice to have those others that we can bounce things off of sometimes and just feel supported. Do you, will you guys have like um, community events where everybody gets together from the different churches? We have done that sort of one time, I guess, Sharon, um, where a community group asked us to help and host an event. We've actually talked about that for a number of years and we're probably really moving in that direction when, you know, COVID hit. Um, so I don't know at what point we will pull that back on the table, but we have done in the distant past, I've done some kind of educational kind of seminars with some other churches with the larger churches in the area for pastors or smaller churches, where we've had kind of a one day mini conference, but not, not with students and, and their families so much. Mm -hmm. um, and Sharon, if you would talk a little bit about that story Amy was alluding to there. Well, um, Shay's mom did not have a special needs ministry and we had a family who had been prior members um, that had moved away. They had a son who has uh, Down syndrome and they had moved away from our church when Brian was um, a baby and um, had lived in Atlanta for several years and were members of a church there that um, had a wonderful special needs program. And, you know, as Amy said, we've been doing this for 21 years. And back then it was basically unheard of to have a special needs ministry. There, there were not many churches in the country uh, even uh, with uh, a ministry of that sort. And so we found out this, this family was moving back to Birmingham. We loved them and we wanted them to be a part of Shades Mountain. So, um, you know, <laughs> we, uh, I personally went to our pastor and, and bounced the idea off of him and he was totally uh, supportive of, um, of uh, starting this and uh, it just started with you know uh, an information meeting to see who would be um, interested in starting something like this and it grew from there um, and uh, as um, Amy alluded to two other um, women um, that first day the four of us uh, kind of met and, and um, joined <laughs> join forces and we've been together this whole time as the leadership team uh, for hand in hand and and so I think that speaks volumes of you know um, the validity of God's plan in his hand in all of this you know to bring together um, the four of us then and you know 21 year, years later we're still serving in the same ministry that's amazing and it all started from just and still you know, friends <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah and you know one thing that um like i said i tell churches that it's just one meeting the needs of one person one family and i think that was the way we started and um to have the support from our pastor from the beginning was um a big deal and not to say that that's not been smooth sailing for all those 21 years you're changing the culture of a church just like you're your job as an organization is to help change the culture of our country and of our world. Um, you know, 21 years ago, the world looked a little different in terms of those with disabilities. And so it's, um, it's really been a cool blessing to see over the 20 years, 
so many things as, as we've been here this long, but one is just the culture of our church change. And, and we do have a big outreach to our community. Um, we can get into that a little bit later, but it's not just our church members, but we have a lot of community events and community um, members that come for different things that we do. But changing, seeing the culture change has been really amazing. And I'm going to ask you to explain that a little bit. We've had the opportunity to have other organizations on um, some restaurant and business owners that have taken, um, you know, steps to have a certain percentage of their workforce that has a special need or a disability. And they say um, the changes that they see in the whole group are just phenomenal. It becomes more family-like. What do you have, what have you guys seen at the church over the last 21 years that really sticks out to you? I think for me, it is, and it has been for years now, um, we don't have to advocate really for our students to become, you know, to be a part of anything at, at our church. Um, we have two young adults that greet on Sunday mornings on a regular basis. Um, well, did. Yeah, I guess most of what we'll speak about is pre-COVID, unfortunately. Um, but they, they are greeters. You know, we have one of my favorite stories is um, we had children's choir on Wednesday night. And a lot of our kids participate in children's choir and the Wednesday night programming with a buddy. And so I had not been... Sharon and I are usually on the hall with our other kiddos teaching them. And I had not been to choir with this young man, but his buddy was out that night. And it was the night they were rehearsing for our Christmas program, I think, and for the kids choir Christmas program. And so I went in with him to the rehearsal and, you know, and we're a large church. So there's, oh gosh, I think at that point, there were probably about 60 kids in that particular portion of the program. And I look up and he's up, you know, he's in the car. This particular young man has autism and um, has headphones on when he sings and they put him front and center. Like there's just no, there's no, oh, let's put these kids in the back or, you know, hide them. They are wherever they are. And he goes up when it's his turn to read, he opens the Bible to the, to the place. And then some, another young man came along beside him and read the scripture and he closed the Bible and they both went back up to their spots. And I thought, that's the coolest thing ever. I did not advocate for him to have a role. You know, it's, it's the heart of our people, the heart of our volunteers, the heart of our leaders and on church staff that just, we're not a complete body without people with all abilities in it, you know, for sure. That's an amazing story. And I think that's a great example of leading by example uh, to a larger community and creating that space where that's not the exception, but it's, it's what's expected. Mm -hmm. um, I would like to say uh, Sarah Williams is in our chat uh, today and she says, that's awesome. Uh, and I'm not sure exactly what point she was talking about, but I, I think in general, she's saying that. Um, and I'd also like to, I, I um, called a friend of mine, a mother in the community here in Birmingham before today's broadcast. And I said, Hey, I, I just want to get a little bit more information about the st special needs ministry. Um, and a uh, few one-liners that she said is um, she felt like the, the program that you guys have there encompasses everybody. She th thought it was very welcoming uh, to all families, all, in all individuals. And she also said that you guys should get a civic award. She's not sure how that works, but you guys deserve a civic award. Um, uh, you so know what our reward is? Our reward is each week when the kids round the corner before their parents onto our hall and they love coming to church. They, they know us by name. They, it's a community and they want to be here. So, you know, we're, we know we're loved and, um, and that, I, I tell my family, if they loved me as much as one of our students loved me, my world would be really good. <laughs> so I know I'm always loved. Well, I love to see the work that you guys are doing. A lot of the broadcasts that we do are kind of with agencies. We're state agencies, ADRS, and it's important to get a lot of this information out about services. But sometimes we don't focus on, um, on some of these broadcasts is the family side of things and what it takes you know, to help out parents and individuals um, on becoming that community. So 
I think what we're doing today is uh, is really good. Um, Sarah Williams also says inclusion is so important and y'all are doing an amazing job. Um, now, when we talk about uh, you, Sarah. when we talk about special needs ministry and, and the programs, what does that look like on a weekly basis? Is it an everyday thing, Monday through Sunday, or how does that work? You want me to take it? Sharon, do you want to do, do well, the honors there? And as Amy said, this is all pre-COVID. <laughs> you know, we after we get out of this, we don't know what our lives will look like, um, what our schedule will look like. Um, right now, um, we're just basically meeting. Our church has decided as a whole that our priorities are Sunday mornings, um, um, trying to keep the doors open so that everyone can meet on Sunday mornings. Um, so that's our priority right now. And um, uh, so we have, you know, uh, uh, we have two church services on Sunday mornings right now. And so on our hallway, we have an hour, we, or an hour and a half of like a Sunday school hour. And then, then our, most of our children go downstairs and join their, um, the other kids for um, children's church. Even, even though we have some that are older, some, and some of our older ones go um, to worship um, uh, in the sanctuary with everyone else. But some of ours that are older still love children's church. So we just try to offer an individual plan, you know, um, not put everybody in a box, you know, well, this person is this age and they want to do this, you know, so everybody needs to do that. So we just try to do an individual um, plan for, for, to meet the needs of each, each child. Prior to COVID, um, you know, we offered, you know, Sunday mornings, um, Wednesday nights, our church has had a full program on, on Wednesday nights and we offered, um, you know, a time uh, of Bible study and, kind of a little less structured than Sunday mornings. Um, we also provided uh, once a quarter a parents night out um, where uh, parents um, bring, you know, um, the child that's part of hand in hand and then there, you know, any other siblings um, to drop them off. And we had a team of volunteers to to come alongside them. We fed them pizza and they played gym, in the gym and we had movies and music and, you know, it was just a fun, fun um, Friday night. And uh, one of our biggest um, community outreaches is um, um, our vacation Bible school each year in June. And um, I think last year we had a hundred somewhere kids come um, and we don't, we don't children have a children and adults with special needs. <laughs> right. We don't have an age cut just, off. Just those and, special needs numbers right at a hundred. Yeah. And so um, uh, we have, you know, we even have a class of, of young adults of of and they love Bible school. And we all have a and we've we've gained so many volunteers through the year just introducing them through VBS as a volunteer with our program and then they fall in love with with our kids and and we get to keep them <laughs> the rest of the year um so let's see Amy what am I leaving out um um just um any any time we have family events mom's night out yes we do a lot of I mean, family hey okay, y'all have frozen i don't know it's still good so i'm gonna keep talking yeah go ahead keep talking we can hear you okay Are you still there yep um yeah. i think sharon the only thing i think is our young adult sunday school class we have a young adult sunday school class that we are currently zooming with that sharon and another lady head up um we we don't have an age cutoff in our church um because you know, you don't outgrow necessarily um, some type of, of disability. Um, we also serve, while we do as much inclusion as possible, we do serve a population of um, students who really aren't able to go into the classrooms, um, either because 
of their cognitive abilities would not be appropriate at their age. You know, a 20 year old that's nonverbal or not a reader really doesn't necessarily feel comfortable or have a, a place in our young adult, you know, typical singles class. Um, we have quite the community on our hall. And I think that parents love that because their kid is who they are and they are known and they have friends. And we actually don't even separate our, our students. And sorry if I call them kids because they're all kids because they're all younger than us. Our students necessarily even by age, it's more um, personalities and abilities and just who fits with who because you learn real quickly, you introduce one child into a, a new child into the class and everything changes, you know? And so we just, we just have a community on hall. We have community inclusion. Um, on Wednesday nights, one thing that I personally love is our parent support group um, that we that met once a month pre-COVID, and we've actually been able to do some on Zoom. That we do anything from just gather. We have a wonderful volunteer, Jessica, who leads that, um, and it can be anything from a special speaker. We bring in speakers probably for mm, probably four or five times a year. And then she leads at the other times. So it can be anything from games to serious topics to prayer. Um, and it's open to anybody. And we do childcare. Sharon and I are on the childcare end of that, um, which has been one kind of fun thing about Zoom because we actually have gotten to hear the speakers um, because we're always doing the childcare. The other nights, one of our mom, the other Wednesday nights of the month, one of our moms felt really um, called just to have a special needs mom's prayer time. So she actually started leading that last year on the other Wednesday nights. And again, that's open to the community. We have several moms that come on Wednesday nights <clears throat> and dads that, that don't attend our church and it's open to anybody. Um, we have family events twice a year. We have mom's night out, try to do it once a quarter. Um, the parents night out. So while we don't have a Monday through Friday program, as you were asking about, we do have lots of events, um, you know, throughout the year. And then we have a wonderful organization, Unless You, that meets in our building currently for a few more months. Um, then they are a Monday through, but actually they're a Tuesday through Friday program um, for young adults. But we are just the conduit for them right now. Uh, is there uh, quite a bit of people that uh, are both in the church and at Unless You? Is a lot of back and forth there. Yeah. Yes, there are. It's um, it's a program for adults, really sixteen and up. So, but several of our members were not attending Unless You somewhere, but they have seen how wonderful the program is, and now they are attending. And I think more of them will probably attend pretty soon, Unless You was as they get their own building, it's going to open up their program to more types um, of, of students. And so I think some more of our students will go. So yeah, it's been a great working relationship. We are familiar uh, of uh, Unless You, and um, uh, we hope to do a broadcast with them in the future. I know that they're going through a lot of things right now, opening up their new location. And actually, the person that introduced us to Unless You is an avid uh, watcher of the channel, Adelia. And I'm wondering, uh, I don't know if she's been uh, to the special needs ministry, Mrs. Ballou, uh, but she keeps me on my toes every week. Um, she'll ask me what's coming up, uh, you know, what broadcast. Well, I'm not going to be able to watch that one. And uh, so I'm going to have to let her know that we did this one. Uh, and uh, she's pro she'll probably know exactly what we're talking about. Absolutely. Hey, and, you know, BBS, as Sharon said, is a huge community event for us. And we have, we have students who have come for... 12 years in a row, you know, unfortunately, a lot of our friends don't have a lot of opportunities in the summer um, when school is out and, and beyond. And so BBS for them is, is it. And we have a lot of fun. It's not sit down boring, you know, sit there 20 minutes. It is on the go, move, very practical, very fun. Um, and we, we love it. We welcome anybody to come and join us. And hopefully we'll have it in some shape, form, or fashion this summer. I don't know what that's going to look like, um, but it will eventually come back. I'm hoping so. I've heard a lot about it, and so I have a family member. Go ahead. I'm sorry. I cut you off there. 
No, oh, I was just going to say, and Lindy Williamson Cleveland, that um, Lindy Cleveland is the founder of Unless You actually um, grew up most of her life in our church. And so Lindy volunteered with us from an early age. So it's just really cool to see how all that has transpired. So yeah, our um, connection. Sounds like Shades Mountain is really just a center point for it, kicking off innovation and community in the disability uh, community in Alabama. Um, whether that started 21 years ago and what, you know, if you take that web of, in, of you know, helping people out and organizations that have come out of that, uh, I'd have to point right at you guys uh, at, the back, at the Shades Mountain as, as kind of spearheading that. I want to jump back and I want to ask a bunch of questions about uh, the Bible, uh, Summer Bible Study Week. Um, for the parent support group, have you noticed that there are certain topics that are more well received or talked about than others? Or is there, you know, one was like a, a huge, huge success uh, as a topic there? Uh, I think one of our really uh, well received uh, nights was when we had um, the sibling panel. Um, we had some, you know, um, parents and siblings of, um, of, you know, kids with special needs. And so the parents were able to pick the brains, you know, of um, the typical siblings, you know, uh, and I think they, that was a huge um, success that night. Other topics have been, um, you know, um, the estate planning, um, you know, um, all the financial, legal, um, you know, uh, things. We had that one not too long ago, and that one, we've had um, speakers in that area several times, and that's always very well received. Um, sometimes they just need a light, fun night, you know, and as um, Amy mentioned, our, our volunteer, Jessica, who is a social worker by um, profession, um, she's great at um, uh, being really intuitive to, to their moods, their needs, their, you know, and so, um, you know, sometimes she just plans, you know, like a daddy game or, or something, you know, something just light and fun, and uh, mm -hmm. I think those nights, when it's rewarding to us when we hear all the laughter at the other end of the hallway coming from that room where they have gathered, so, you know, sometimes our parents, life is heavy and they just need to laugh. And when you hear those belly laughs coming from, that's just hugely rewarding. Those diaphragm laughs are the best. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. And I do think I tell, you know, one nice thing about our support group is there are lots of great things about our support group, but we have parents of, you know, older kids and then the younger ones. And, that sibling panel, we actually did it. They were like, can we do it again? Because I tell parents, you know, because that is a concern. What is this? How is this affecting my other kids or my other child? And um, people who grow up with a, a sibling with special needs, I think are my favorite people in the entire world. Um, they almost, I mean, I really can't think of back on our 21 years of a sibling that is not just a great human being. You know, they learn so early that life's not just about them. And um, they're just great, great people. And again, 21 years, we've seen a lot of siblings grow up. And to have them come back and share was, was just really, really encouraging, I think, for everybody. And I think even for the parents, their parents, because they got to hear things that they probably wouldn't have expressed. You know, you don't sit around and talk about it all the time. So that was a really cool thing. Yeah, I, I love that. And um, that sibling effect that you said, like the great people, um, the, the business owners that we've talked about when they bring in uh, people that have a special need or disability, I think they hit on that. I don't know if it's as deep as, as a sibling thing, but the culture and the people around start to realize it's not just about you, we're in this together. Uh, and I think that drives, drives home that point. And I want to touch back on, uh, you mentioned the schedule is not necessarily a Monday through Friday type of thing, even though unless you is there at your um, location. Um, 
and I really like that uh, you guys have kind of, you, you have your specific Wednesdays and Sunday schedule that, you know, basically every, every week, Wednesday and Sunday outside of COVID um, that these things are going to happen. And then you, you have a bunch of other uh, events and activities throughout the month, throughout the quarter, uh, throughout the year. And that makes me think like, you know, a lot of times I'll speak with families and uh, they're in dire straits and they've, they've waited a little too long and now it's decision time and they need immediate action and they need immediate results. And that looks like going and doing something for one week straight for 80 hours until it gets solved. But that's not always necessarily like the, it's not the best way to do it. And it doesn't always guarantee long-term success. So if you kind of break those up and you have them long-term and they'll always be there, it, it allows you to come back maybe that week or that month or that quarter just to get refreshed mm -hmm. and, and keep building on top of that. It's a very long-term yeah. solution. I think you guys are doing. Um, it, we love the community that, that has been created here. It's not us. And, and Sharon and I and all the leadership team that we have that has grown now, you know, we don't want it to be about us. It is not about us. It is about our students. It is about the community um, of, of families that, that are connected now. It, we are the facilitators. You know, we feel very strongly that we teach every child, every student that walks into this church about the Lord and about the Bible because that's what churches do. And they also provide a strong sense of community, um, you know, as you can hear through our lives for, for us, our church has been a strong sense of community. We want to provide that for our families and facilitate that for our families. Um, you know, as you know, marriages are, um, the divorce rate is super high among families with special needs children. And so if we can support those families, um, wow, that's a win. You know, it's, it's hard. It's hard life sometimes. It's a blessing and the children are amazing, but it's, you take the pressures that we all have and you add things on top of it. And if we can provide some support and a break and some fun, then that's a win. Yeah, I speak with a lot of agencies, like I mentioned, and, and we go over the services involved, but then I, I speak with a lot of individuals and families. And one of the things that they say has always helped them is their church, their church group, um, getting involved there. And it's not always like X's and O's when you're dealing with the state and services. It's more, uh, you know, coming from, a, I don't want to say agencies aren't passionate by any means, but um, coming from a different angle. And if you guys would speak a little bit on what you, what you think the role of churches here in Alabama serve in that overall uh, capacity for families and individuals. Sharon, you want to take that one first? I, it's a great question. As a believer, yes. as a believer in Christ, I can't imagine what my life would be like without assembling together with other believers. And I don't, I don't have the pressures of having um, a family member with, you know, a disability. Um, for those families, yeah. I can't imagine their life. I can't, Im and apart from Christ, I don't know how they do it. And our heart has been broken our hearts have been broken over and over again as we've heard testimonies from families who have been to churches where their family member was not welcome. And in some cases, they've even been asked not to return to, to a certain church. I can't imagine. I can't imagine that. I'm sorry. <laughs> but... Um, you know, God's house is to be a house for all people. And if we as believers truly believe that each one of us was created in the image of Christ, there's nothing there that says except for that child with Down syndrome, except for that child with autism. You know, there are no exceptions to that, to that verse. We are all created in the image of Christ. And the body is the place where 
there are none of us who deserve to be there. You know, um, it's for, you know, he's, Christ said it's for the sick, for the sinners, you know, not for those who have perfect bodies or minds or souls. You know, we're all sinners. We're all in need of um, a savior. And like I said, there are no exceptions to that. And that's the role of the church is to be a house, a house of prayer for all people. <clears throat> mm -hmm. And churches, in my opinion, are not complete without people with all abilities in them. Um, Sharon and I got the opportunity last November to join an organization in Michigan. Um, and they, were, they brought people from all over the United States together. And it was just encouraging to us to see, we were one of the larger churches there, um, just church membership. There were a lot of small churches and just to see people from all over the country in different churches that are just meeting the need. And it's just meeting the need. Um, and, you know, that's how we started. And that's how our inclusion works. And that's how our programs at church work. It's, it's what works for that child, like Sharon said. And, you know, you don't have to be a large church and this ministry doesn't cost a whole lot. So for a church to just come alongside any size church for any, you know, anybody just to come alongside those families and support, that should be what the church does. And um, I think the church does have a role in the community of meeting those needs. I, excuse me, I, I, I thank you both for sharing that. Uh, I think that is spot on. And I'll say that from the success stories that I've spoken with people about, I think the foundation of church and having a good relationship with your maker uh, and, and Jesus, I think a lot of a good majority of the success stories, that's very evident. And, and I think probably evident at the community at large. Um, so I, both of you, thank, thank you for sharing that. Can I um, add one? Can, can I add a story? We also uh, had the privilege several, several years ago of um, uh, working with Brooklyn Tabernacle in New York City, uh, in Brooklyn, um, to um, kind of come along um, side them and um, host a special needs um, vacation Bible school. Um, they had not done that um, previously and we were able to assist them and uh, kind of showing them the ropes there. And on that Sunday morning, we were able to, we had the privilege of worshiping with them. And I don't know if you've ever been, but their choir is just magnificent. And I stood there and wept because on that Sunday morning, because you're, look, you're listening to that choir and you're looking at those faces. And it's truly, it was truly a picture of heaven. Every tongue and every nation, it seems like, was represented. And, you know, and I just wept. But, you know, even more so than just every tongue and every nation, there's going to be every disability, every ability. You know, there's, I think, you know, heaven is going to be so wonderful, you know, because those those children, those children that we get to teach, they're going to be there. They're going to, <laughs> yeah. and they're going to have perfect body. We're all going to have perfect bodies. But that picture of heaven that day was just so overwhelming, you know, and to think that and when we get to heaven, we're, it's just going to be all of us, you know, rejoicing. Um, so I'm sorry, I, that was just a special memory, some, a very special privilege that we were uh, um, given. I appreciate you, you sharing that story. That's an amazing I think story. Cool. And Amy, go ahead, was, I'm sorry. It was a very neat moment. I think one thing that's cool about our BBS, our carnival, our mom, anything, anything we do, it's not just um, Baptist and it's, it's any any denomination any faith um anyone is welcome and comes um you know we have a lot of students that come from different faith backgrounds and they come to bbs and they come to our events and they're a part of our church and our ministry um because 
who doesn't need to know they're loved? Last time I checked, um, everybody wants to be loved and accepted. Me too. That's what I told, you know, if, if my family loved me all the time, like my, my students love me. Um, so that is something that, and I think the community senses that. Um, I mean, I guess they do. That's why they keep coming. And I hope that that's something that we can um, continue to, you know, to portray. We, um, during COVID, we have done a lot of individual ministry. Um, while we haven't been able to meet together and meet and do the, the typical things, we have done some really fun and creative things, if I do say so. Um, but we have done a lot of driving and a lot of meeting the needs because you know, it's been hard on everybody, right? COVID has just been really, really hard on our families in particular. And so we've had the privilege of just meeting people's physical needs, financial needs, um, emotional needs. So for us, this is personal. It is about individuals and it is about families. And so just the relationships there. If I, if I had to lead from a lofty tower you wouldn't find me there that's not who we are it's about people um so i kind of want to ask a few questions there during this covid time you guys have been able to um how are you doing the zooms are you actually going out to the houses uh and helping out in that respect and being one-on-one -on -one? a um, little bit of both um sharon i'll let you talk about the zooms on sundays and um we have had to get creative like everybody else, right? And the group that I was talking about from Michigan, we've actually been Zooming, we were Zooming about once a week um, during the thick of COVID and they helped us brainstorm and we came up with some things. But one of my favorite things we did during COVID early, like June, because we didn't have Bible school um, when people were first in Alabama coming out of you know restrictions, we did a drive-by parade. So we invited volunteers to come to our parking lot. We handed out shakers and they made signs. And um, we just headed down to our parking lot. We spaced out and the kids and their families could drive through, stay in their cars. It was safe. And at the end, we had a, um, a shaved ice truck. And so people could get out and get their family. And some families chose to socially distance and sit outside. Some ate in their cars. But it was a huge morale booster. I was on cloud nine for weeks just because people had not seen each other. Um, volunteers were thrilled to actually see people and see each other, even if they didn't know each other. You know, you recognize people at least. And our kids' faces were beaming and their parents. It was just a win. And it was easy and it was safe. And that was so much fun. And then we had already done a delivery to all the houses um, back in probably early April, I guess, when online school kind of kicked in for everybody in the state of Alabama. And you could tell our, our mama's stress levels went through the roof. Um, and so we, Sharon and I went and got individual kind of toys and items. You know, we know our kids pretty well. And so we were able to just get three or four little dollar store items for each one of our students, package those and then got flowers for the mamas. And we delivered them to their houses. And I think we've done that twice for two different things. And it was about 400 miles at least, maybe more, because we have people, unfortunately, you have to drive a long way um, to come to our church. I wish they didn't, but you know, it wasn't, what a sacrifice. They drive it every week or twice a week. It was really, really wonderful to be able to deliver those and visit. Um, then in August, July, late July, I guess, Sharon, we took um, signs. You know, I don't know with where you are. Um, you've seen a lot of the yard signs, but when the you know quarantine shut things down around here, we would see signs of, um, oh, this is a dance student at such and such place, or we love our um, baseball team, or we you know gymnast, or whatever it was. And we were like, hey, we love our kids. Um, and so we made um, someone is loved by someone special lives here. I don't even remember the, the verbiage on it, but by hand in hand, it stays out bad as church. So we went and we stuck them in their yards and you talk about fun. Um, <laughs> most of them still have them in their yards. And it was just fun because our kids don't get recognized like that very often. Um, 
you know, to be able to do that. Um, we have done, we've taken, we've had people that have had COVID, we've had job loss, we've had deaths in the family um, all during this. And so we have had the privilege of going to the homes to do some of that um, type of ministry hands-on. We did not, I wish we could have done some child care in the homes and kind of given the parents a break, but with the COVID precautions that just, I mean, we weren't scared of it, more protecting them you know, um, and what people are, are comfortable with, but we have been able to resource some, some things for them. And then we've had an online presence that I'll let Sharon talk about. Um, for a while, we were doing two Zooms on Sunday afternoons. One was our teenage class, but most of them have now returned to, um, to come in on Sundays. Um, so we're down to our young adult class uh, that meets at four o'clock on Sunday afternoons. And um, we have about 15 uh, young adults who are Zooming on Sunday afternoons and it is just the most fun. Um, they're delightful. They are excited to see each other each week. We have um, not only um, members of, you know, of our church who would be in the class you know, anyway, uh, we have some kids that we're able if, from the community or who were able to join us because we're zooming um you know there haven't been a whole lot of good things come from COVID but um you know you look for the silver lining wherever you can find it and and that is one of them is um being able to reach outside the walls of our church and uh include those who just love being included um, love studying the word of God together and, you know, just are craving that um, social time. So that has been really, really fun. I think a lot of, you it's know, what, what we don't hear in, in the news with the COVID stuff is the mental health behind it. Um, I am a very outgoing person. I like meeting with people. Um, you know, I got to get out and do stuff. And I've suffered a little bit you know, with, uh, you know, being cooped up and not having those experiences. So for you guys to be able to go out to the house and, and maybe speak from the curb and put a sign in there and do these Zoom meetings uh, that everybody gets lit up and can still see the community and their friends uh, and still worship and learn. I think it, it does a lot more um, that is being recognized. Uh, and I think um, there's a big impact behind that that we'll talk about in the future. And I hope shapes uh, you know, how we do things. Uh, and you guys are doing it right there. I want to focus, uh, we're getting a, a little bit to the end here. Um, I would like to focus on Vacation Bible School. I have an individual in my family um, who receives services, and she is 56 years old and um, <clears throat> has an intellectual disability. And we have a meeting every year to help her figure out her goals uh, for the next 12 months. And someone that I invited into this meeting um, was the one that uh, said that you guys uh, encompass everybody and you should get a civic award. Uh, and she was like, hey, you know, you need to get Bridget in there this, this coming summer um, because it's absolutely phenomenal. And from my understanding, it's a one week thing. Or if you guys could just give me kind of an overview of it. Um, we do several events that coincide with our greater church events, you know, and VBS is one of them. Um, our whole VBS is very high energy. It is very fun. It is typically the first full week of June. And that's a, a good marker for our family um, that don't go to our church even. Whatever the first full week is, which this week is this year is actually later than usual, um, just depending on when the Monday is. And again, this year, in fact, I have a meeting next week about what this even might look like. We are able to pull off Sunday mornings on our hall pretty effectively right now. Um, certainly, we're running half of our typical pre-COVID um, attendance church-wide and hand-in-hand -hand wide, but I'm grateful that we have anybody coming back. I was concerned at first, um, but we're able to do it safely unless you use meetings, except for foundation, uh, you know, um, can we accommodate 98 students with special needs? Probably not from a space standpoint, but we're gonna figure something out 
Um, BBS is just my favorite week of the year. I think we all would say that. It's all hands on deck. 2019, um, I knew it was going to be a big year. We, we have grown exponentially with the hand in hand portion. That's our ministry's name, by the way. Um, every year. And 2019 was the first year that I have not been worried about the number of volunteers we needed. People were coming to me like crazy. And I was like, oh, okay, God, what are you going to do here? Because <laughs> this is never the problem that we have. Um, and so that was, you know, just to see the excitement. It is nine to 12 every day. And as Sharon said earlier, we don't have an age cut off. Sharon leads our, our adult class. Um, we kind of even toyed last two years ago. We Obviously we didn't have it last June um, with changing the name of like their portion just to kind of be a camp or a, you know, whatever. But in the greater picture, they do most of their own thing. And you just kind of explain, you know, along the way, we talk to every single new family that comes before Bible school to explain what it is, um, to get information about their student, you know, allergies, needs, um, whatever we need to know. And so it's a, it's obviously a very busy few weeks for us, but it is just so much fun. And a lot of our folks know each other from school or other, you know, community resources. They may have played ball together. They may have been at Central Foundation together. They may have been in preschool together, you know. Um, but there is no, there is no age cut off to having fun last time I checked. And so, um, you know, Sharon just does a phenomenal job leading them. It's just fun. Um, I'm in the trenches, kind of putting out fires. And Sharon, Sharon leads that class very, very well. Sharon, if you would speak about your experience uh, and what you'd like to say about Vacation Bible School. Uh, usually my birthday is June 7th. And usually I spend my birthday at Bible School. Can't think of anybody else I'd rather spend it with than those kids. I've had the birthday crown. I've had, you know, the parties and, and, you know, it's just so uh, fun to, to be with them. Um, you know, a real effort is made uh, for our older ones that, you know, they're not kitties anymore, you know, and we try, we um, make a real effort um, to tailor, um, you know, the lessons and, um, and our activities so that they're not sitting there making macaroni crafts or something, you know, uh, uh, tailor it for them and, and make them feel special um, during that week. Uh, and a, a lot of them um, are limited as to um, their activities uh, that are offered to them at that age. So we just, we just make a real effort, you know, to our, Number one goal is to to share Christ with them, to teach um, about Him, and to let them know that they are loved by Him and by us. and And then we have fun doing it. So, I have a question. What Lots if... of music. Oh, music is good. <laughs> music. We have our own special music time with our children's minister, who's led our music for all of Bible school. So that is the highlight for everybody <laughs> who doesn't love music. I have a question if, um, uh, can, so you mentioned anyone can join, you have to pre-register I'm guessing, and that's when you speak with the families. And that link, mm -hmm. uh, I know it's not quite concrete what it's gonna look like this year, but I imagine that that link will be on the Shades Mountain Baptist Church website. Yes, and it always has a place for those with special needs. Um, if anything is confusing, there's a, tab on there that special needs ministry that's straight to um, our email address. That's pretty simple. A Kirby at shades.org, S little at shades.org. It's very clear. Um, if, if the registration part is not, somebody will get back to you. But yes, we welcome anybody, in abil any ability. Um, you know, we, we just feel very strongly that um, we want everybody to come. So, and if that's what we that's what we do. 
and I'm thinking for my my family member specifically, and, and I'm hoping there are other families that might be in the same boat, but <clears throat> um, for that one week, I'd like to come, you know, for a day or two, but I may not be able to make it every day. Um, is my family member's caregiver allowed to come with her all of the days if that needs being? Yes, the answer to all yes. of that. <laughs> we... <laughs> yeah, um, what we love is to gain the trust so that the family member, usually mom, the caregiver, um, has three hours alone for five whole days. I mean, wow. Um, yeah you know, that, that is sometimes the only break that mom gets all summer or all year for that matter, depending on the age of, of the student. Um, yes, we have no secrets. Um, so family members can, can join and we have a lot of moms. In fact, it's the only time that we ask our hand in hand moms to volunteer is that week, but most often they are not with their student. Um, most of the time, all of our church members, I don't let them volunteer. That's up front. You don't volunteer with us. Go do what you did before you had a child with special needs. Go do volunteer with a different age group. Let us do this for you for a mere three to five hours a week. We've got this. You go do something else. Um, but if, if students are not comfortable or if caregivers are not comfortable, absolutely, they are welcome to, to hang out with us. Um, you know, and see what we do. My guess is after day one, they're like, out of here, mom. Yeah. I don't need you. I can see how it could be. Uh, some parents I meet are a little protective and they they feel like if they step away, something negative is going to happen. So gaining that trust. And then when they see that, uh, you know, they're like, okay, yeah, I'm out of here. I'll be back in three hours. I, I need a little me time. Yes. Yeah. Uh, is and that happened. Is there any cost to vacation Bible school? Zero. Um, it is a free event. We have t-shirts that most of the, the students want a t-shirt. And I think they're, I think they may have even gone up to $6 last year. Anyway, it's a cheap t-shirt. Um, but our VBS t-shirts are fun. And the theme is always fun because our children's minister is amazing and outstanding and energetic and an amazing leader. And so it's, it's just always fun. Um, you mentioned volunteers. Is there a way that people um, can sign up to volunteer? Yes. Um, we have a reinstituted, I guess, new process at our church, as I think many, many churches are. Um, it's pretty involved in terms of the background check. And um, especially, if, you know, if we don't know you, but it's a reference, it's, um, watching a video, there's a, there's a process to become a volunteer. So you can't just sign up today and become a volunteer tomorrow. Um, and that's for good reason, obviously, um, we serve children and a vulnerable population. And so we need to, to make sure that we're doing our due diligence, but yes, we, in fact, through the years probably would not have made it without volunteers from the community. We use a lot of our students and, um, kids from the high school and even middle school that want to volunteer, um, other people who may be in special ed in college, you know, we, we use a lot of outside volunteers to make it work. It, um, it takes a lot of hands on deck. <laughs> Is there, uh, are there any other upcoming events that you would recommend individuals and family members get involved in, whether that's a, uh, a church broadcast or, Anything that comes to mind? Gosh, we're trying really hard. <laughs> you think of something, Sharon? Um, well, just in general, uh, I know we have a man church this coming Sunday night in yeah. G. Kizik, the former Auburn um, football coach is speaking at that. It will be in person and on Zoom. You know, all information can be found on our um, shades.org you know, website about that. Um, I can't think of anything specifically in the special needs community um, right off the top of my head at the moment. Thank you. We are, yeah, we are in the process as a church and as a ministry of figuring out what, what's next. You know, what does this look like? 
Um, we are still, we're going to ramp back up with our online support groups, which again, open to anybody at any time. We were also doing, we were doing those sort of kind of once a month during COVID. Um, and then we were doing the mom's prayer group um, every week. And then we moved to every other week because we were doing support group. But you know, it, there's flex, right? Because that's what COVID has been about is being flexible. But we do, we are starting back with our online presence on Wednesday nights at some point, probably mid-February. Um, well, anybody is welcome to those. Um, I will tell you, True Confessions, Chair and I are horrible at keeping our website updated. But we are, we are not often in front of the computer. We are more often hands-on. Um, but anybody at any time is welcome to email us and maybe share that line of fire under us to get some, some more current information on our webpage on the website. But people are welcome to join there. Um, we're pondering like an outdoor event of some sort, maybe another parade, maybe a day at the zoo. We're, we're, we're constantly trying to figure out something for folks and families to be able to participate in. What I'm going to do is uh, after we're done going live here, I'm going to um, put a few links in the chat so people can click on them. Uh, and if there's a link, I'll do some research and maybe if you guys have a link for me where I can send that out to the chat that would give those link, uh, links for Zoom uh, on Sunday night and, and starting in February and, and those kind of updates. Or I, you know, I could, I could uh, put a link on the Shades uh, Mountain Baptist Church Facebook page if you guys are putting them out there. Um, what, what do you think would be better? Is, should I go to the .org or, or the Facebook page? Oh, we actually do a better job with our Facebook page than we sort of, than we do the website. So Facebook page does have, um, tell you what, start with the .org. We're actually looking at a new Facebook page as well. Um, right now, our Facebook page is for parents, pretty much of our church, only because it's more of a confidential kind of prayer request um, community where, you know, they don't want the whole world on purpose, um, but we have actually pondered a, a more of a public Facebook page for this sort of thing, where for anybody that's not a member to come and check out events, and we have Bible stories on there, and um, different things like that, so uh, right now, shades.org, and under the ministries tab, there's special needs ministry, and you can, you can click that, again, you can call me, you can call Sharon, we are an open book, our phone numbers are posted everywhere, um, easily accessible because we just like to talk to parents because that's, that gives a, a level of comfort and involvement um, that you can't get by clicking on a link sometimes. Mm -hmm. I'm going to do both. I'm going to put the, uh, the website in the chat and then I'm also going to check in on Facebook uh, at Shades Mountain Baptist Church. So sort of go back to your Facebook uh, group there. Um, as we kind of come to a close here, I want to ask, is there anything that we haven't talked about that you think someone watching as an individual or a family member would really benefit from hearing from uh, at this point? A loaded question. Um, I think that when you look at statistics and in, in the general population, I mean, this is no surprise to you might have listened to this broadcast that, you know, about... 20% of the population has some sort of disability. That may be back pain to severe autism. You know, it, it's a range, but it's safe to say that most people know someone with a disability and that um, to reach out to your church or a local church or our church or, or Highlands or Briarwood or Dawson, I mean, in the Birmingham area, like there, there's, um, we're very, very, very fortunate here to have a good network of churches. I, my passion, I think something the Lord has told us from early on is to help other churches start special needs ministries because not everybody wants to come to our church. Not everybody worships the same way. Not everybody, you know, should have to drive 30 miles to get here um, or any of the churches that have it. So to, to know that there are churches out there, not just our church, but that there are many churches that want to support and come alongside and to know they're not alone 
Most families are not alone. It's a very isolating thing. We hear that over and over and over again. Um, that it's just hard because people don't understand your life. Well, there are people out there that understand your life and there are others walking that road with you. So to, to be encouraged to just take one step um, towards that. Thank you, Amy, for sharing that. I appreciate that. And Sharon, is there anything that comes to mind uh, for you? Just um, thinking a little bit further of what Amy said, just um, don't, don't live in isolation. You know, um, I know it's hard to get up on Sunday mornings and get out the door and get everybody ready and out the door. Um, but it, it will be so worth it, you know, if you'll just, I know it's hard to take that first step um, so many times because the unknown and for those who who experienced uh, in the past um, a less than desirable experience, um, you know, when they've gone somewhere, uh, gone to a church and expected to be treated differently. And, and so I know that's hard. But, um, you know, there are churches out there that, um, you know, will love and accept and, and welcome you with open arms. Um, just seek it out. Um, don't just live in isolation. Two very, very powerful messages there. <clears throat> Amy. I have one more thought. Yes, um, ma'am. I always have one more thought. Um, when you were talking about things that are going on in the community right now, something I was going to mention earlier, Sharon and I have kind of joined a joint venture with um, Young Life Capernaum from Birmingham, um, a man named Houston Walker, and Elise Jones, who is one of the teachers at Unless You, and some other area churches are coming alongside to have a young adult Bible study once the students have... Um, aged out of Young Life, which is 21 for Young Life Capernaum. And right now our church is hosting that and some other churches are coming alongside, like I said, to support that. It is open to the community. Anybody that is aged out of high school, we're doing once a month, a gathering, again, music, fun little lessons, some kind of activity we eat. So far- That's always good. I like food. Always good. Uh, Chick-fil-A, Tzatziki's, we we even met during COVID and we're hoping to start back February, um, 18th. 18th, Thursday night, February 18th, safe, socially distant, um, you know, individually prepared food. It meets for an hour and a half, um, 6.30 to 8 at our church. And again, it's something that we just saw the need for something beyond high school that's a, just a fun gathering where people can worship for a few minutes and learn a fun, interactive biblical lesson. And again, community and we're calling it belong, which is what made remember made me remember it because we're talking about belonging and everybody wants to belong. And so that is something that is brand new. It's in its infancy. We started meeting in September, I think. Um, COVID again shifted some of those plans. We also that is um a very the goal is to be inclusive and have um typical young adults come in, college students, young adults, and just be a community. We've had to limit the numbers, obviously, right now, but as restrictions loosen, we hope to kind of model it after the young life model where there's a lot of peer interaction. So that is that is something new and exciting that um, I think has a lot of potential. That's February 18th from 6.30 to 8 will be the first in-person. It's gonna be limited, but I feel like that is a big, um, section of the community that sometimes isn't addressed. There's a lot of structure in the first 21 years in the school system. Um, but after that, it kind of phases out. It's like going to college. You got to go to class. Nobody's going to stand there and tell you. Uh, so you, you need to build your own structure there. And, and having organizations like this and events like this will help you build mm -hmm. that structure. Mm -hmm. so they can uh, contact us for more information or if they know anybody unless
Christmas View or Houston Walker through Young Life Capernaum. About we have that. We have a uh, question in chat. Jamie Gable Curtis says, if we would like to build a similar program at our church, would you all be willing to help guide us? Absolutely. Um, that was one thing I realized a couple months ago that I was missing during COVID is not talking to other churches. Um, we pre-COVID averaged probably two calls a month, either email calls, meetings um, to help get you know, talk people through how to start a special needs ministry. We are not the end all be all. We have been doing it a long time. We know what we do. Um, and we also know what some other folks do. And your ministry is not going to look like our ministry. And our ministry doesn't like anybody else's ministry. But we do know the nuts and bolts. And Sharon tells a story. When we started, y'all, we're so old that um, the World Wide Web was sort of just barely there. And Sharon went into the local Christian bookstore and asked for books on special needs ministry. And they literally said, what are you talking about? Um, and there was so one book you could order. Yeah, one book, one book. So we in, helped invent the wheel in some ways. We had some support along the way, but we love sharing that with other churches and um, are absolutely, I miss talking to other people about how, how they can meet the needs in their churches and their communities. Are you guys thinking about writing a book? <laughs> Not me. <laughs> Not me. I'll talk um, and, and tell people all day long. Um, I'll leave the book writing. I'll pay for another. <laughs> <laughs> well, at this point, uh, we're going to go ahead and, and kind of wind down here. And I'd like to say uh, thank you both for being with us today and sharing your story and your message. Uh, you two great leaders in this community. And I, um, I'm applauding everything that you guys do and who you are uh, and the stand that you guys are in the community. So thank you very much for me and my family. Uh, we hope to be at the Vacation Bible School, whether that's this year or next year. Uh, so I hope to see you guys in person when everything kind of settles down a little bit. Um, and, and I just want to say thanks again for spending, spending your morning with us. Thank you for having wow. us. Thank you. The blessing is ours. I cannot imagine my life without all the wonderful people and families and volunteers and everybody that has, this has brought to my life and my world. You know, you just don't see sometimes the, the path the Lord has for you, but I cannot imagine a better one. So it has been a privilege um, to be here today. And it's a privilege to get to do what we do every day. Uh, it's amazing. People are missing out if they don't know somebody um, that has a disability. I agree. I feel like lives be, are enriched by knowing somebody that has a disability. But, okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and end the broadcast, and then I'm going to post some links in the chat. Um, so it was very nice meeting you guys virtually, and hopefully this year or next year, I'll get to meet you guys in person. We look forward to it. Sounds great. All right. Have a great day. Come see us. Bye-bye. You too. Bye-bye.